Today I'll teach you how to save and retrieve files from database in ASP.NET. So let's start. This is SQL Server Management Studio and you can see the database script file which will be used to create the database and as well as the database table. This script can be downloaded from the article and also I have placed the link in the description. So the next thing is to execute this SQL file. As you can see the database has been created and also the table has been created. The table has four columns ID, name, content type and data. ID will be the file ID name is the name of file content type is the content type of the file which is like jpg png and pdf data is the actual binary data that's it from the database now i am moving to the visual studio where first i'll add the connection string So now the connection string is ready. Let's move to the ASPX page where we'll start the programming. So first I am adding an ASP.NET file upload control. Below that I am adding a button. The button will be used to upload the file. I am adding an on click event handler to the button. Now let's move to the code behind where we'll write code for the uploading part. So here first I am adding the namespaces. The first one is system.io which will be used for file processing. The second one is system.data which will be used for data table. The third one is system.configuration for accessing the connection string from the web.config file the fourth one is system.data.sql client which will be used for ad.net operations so now i am adding the event handler for the button so first i have created a variable for file name here I am using path.getFileName function because sometimes in old browsers the fake path or the path of the local folder is set in this property. The second one is content type. The next thing I am doing is creating the object of the stream class to which I am setting the posted file dot input stream object of the file upload control. Then I am making use of binary reader class to read the binary data from the file upload control. As you can see, I am passing the stream class object to the binary reader object. The input stream is actually the stream object of the file and it will be converted into byte array using the binary reader class. When we want to save a file data in binary format in the database, we need to make use of byte array object. The input stream is converted into byte array using the read bytes function of the binary reader. The read bytes function accepts the content length property. The content length property holds the length of the stream. The next thing I am doing is reading the connection string from the web.config file.
then I have created the SQL connection object using the connection string. Now I am writing the insert query which will be used to insert the file data into the database table. I will be passing three parameters. The first one is name. The second one is content type. And the third one is data. I am not passing the ID as the ID will be automatically generated in the database. The next thing I am doing is creating the SQL command object to which I'll pass the SQL query and the SQL connection object. Now I'm adding the parameters to be passed to the SQL query. The first one is name to which I'll pass the file name. The second one is content type. The third parameter is data to which we will pass the byte array. So the final task is to open the connection, then call the execute non query function and then close the connection, which will execute the query also insert the file into the database. So our upload part is ready. Let's move to the ASPX page where we will populate file from the database in the grid view control. So I am adding a grid view control now. So here in the grid view, I have added bound field column for name and the template field column. Now I am adding a link button which will be required in order to download the file. So now let's move to the code behind where we'll write the code to populate the grid view. So here inside the page load event handler, I am adding the not is postback condition. The next thing I am doing is reading the connection string from the web.config file. Then I have created the SQL connection object to which I am passing connection string. The next thing I am doing is creating the SQL command object and to which I am passing the SQL query which will be used to fetch the records from the table and display it into the grid view. Then I am creating SQL data adapter object and to which I am passing the SQL command object. Now I am creating a data table object.
the data table is filled with the data using the fill function of the SQL data adapter. Finally, the data table is assigned as data source to the grid view and the data bind function of the grid view is called. So our upload part is ready. Let's run the code and see it in action. So first I am selecting a file. Then I am clicking on the upload button. So the file has been inserted. Let's move to the ASPX page. So first I am adding an on click event handler to the link button. Now here I'll be adding a hidden field which will hold the ID inside it. Now let's move to the code behind where we'll write code for the download part. So now I am adding the event handler for the download link button. The next thing I am doing is reading the ID from the hidden field using grid view row details. Now I am creating a variable of type byte array. Byte array because I will be reading the file data. Now I am creating a variable of file name. And lastly content type. The next thing I am doing is reading the connection string from the web.config file. Then I have created the SQL connection object using the connection string. The next thing I am doing is creating the SQL command object and to which I am passing the SQL query which will be used to fetch the records from the table. Now I am adding the ID parameters to the SQL command object. The next thing I am setting the connection to SQL command object. Then I am creating SQL data adapter object and to which I am passing the SQL command object. Now I am creating a data table object. The data table is filled with the data using the fill function of the SQL data adapter. The next thing I am doing is reading the value of row of the data table. The first one is byte array. The second one is content type.
and lastly file name first i am clearing the response then i am setting the buffer property to true then i have set the care set property of the response as blank now i am setting the set cacheability property of the response class to no cache so that the cache is cleared next i am setting the content type property of the response class it is used to notify the browser about the file type now i am adding an header to the response this header is called content disposition it is used to tell the browser that the downloading file is an attachment and also it allows us to set the file name for the exported file specifying an attachment tells the browser that uh, the file must be saved on the computer that means user will get an option to open the file or save the file while if you don't do that then the file will be automatically opened in the browser then i am making use of binary write method to which i'll pass the byte array and the response dot flush method is called and finally the response is ended so this completes the download part or we can say coding part is complete let's run the code and check it So as you can see the names of the file are being displayed and also the download link is visible and when i am clicking on the download link the file is being downloaded thanks for watching please like share and subscribe and don't forget to click the bell icon goodbye